In farmers' fields in the Andes Mountains of Ecuador, flowering plants grow along field borders. These plants have many benefits. Often, plants serve as living fences to mark the boundary between neighboring fields. For example, we make a fence of chilco, so the wind does not blow directly on the crop. It stops the wind and helps to keep the humidity in the soil. Using traditional knowledge, farmers also collect plants from field borders to use as medicine. Many plants that grow along the field edges are also used to feed animals like guinea pigs, rabbits, sheep, llamas, cows and pigs. The Andean cherry trees give us fruit to eat. It's food for us. We feed the leaves to the animals and use the firewood for cooking. But few people know that when the flowering plants in and around fields are removed, crops often yield less and are more attacked by harmful insects. In this video, we will learn how flowering plants in or around our fields help us to get better crops. The insects that help us do so in two main ways. They pollinate our crops and they kill insect pests. Insects are attracted to flowers because of their colours, shapes and sizes. By taking pollen from one flower to the other, insects pollinate the plants. The best known pollinating insects are bees and bumblebees. They're beneficial because they help us with the pollination of all the plants, so that uh, because of that we get better harvests. Bees also give us honey, wax and propolis. Flowering plants are also visited by insects like hoverflies, many of which look like bees but they have only two wings. Other insects that pollinate flowers are wasps and different types of flies. Fruit trees and many vegetable crops like tomatoes and squash and pulses such as beans, broad beans, soya beans and peas must be pollinated by insects or else the crop will not yield anything. We need pollinators so the fruits can grow. Among the vegetables, the zucchini, the squash and other gourds need pollination. And for the fruit, there are pears, apples, blackberries. Without pollinators, we cannot harvest or produce any fruit for ourselves or for the market. Besides pollination, various insects also help to protect our crops. Spiders, wasps, ants and ladybird beetles hunt and eat insect pests, such as the fall armyworms in our maze. The larvae of hoverflies feed on aphids, while the adults visit flowers for their nectar. Predatory bugs pierce their sharp mouth part into the body of insect pests and suck out the liquids, as such killing it. All these beneficial insects live in the flowering plants on the field edges and they move from field to field where they eat pests. 
The hairy flies lay their eggs inside caterpillars, and as the young of flies grow up, they eat the pest. By doing so, hairy flies kill the potato tuber moth and other pests. There are also small wasps that lay their eggs in or on caterpillars and other pests and kill them. A field with many different kinds of insects, and lots of them, has almost no pests. The insects that kill pests also need to eat pollen and drink nectar, a sweet liquid made by flowers. Trees, shrubs and herbs with flowers provide nectar to these useful insects and give them shelter. Some plants have yellow flowers. These are the most noticeable. Others have white flowers. We observe which plants are good, where there are more insects, and these are the ones that we plant around our fields. Plants like sunflower, chamomile, lavender, fennel, and aromatic plants such as oregano, rosemary and sage feed the insects that help us. Trees in or around your field can also be a great source of pollen and nectar and attract many insects that help us. The more aromatic the tree is, the more it attracts beneficial insects. To know more about insects and flowering plants, you can use apps on your phone. To use an app to identify plants and insects, you need clear photographs of the insects and of the leaves, flowers and fruits of the plants. You can also learn to recognize insects by collecting them and discussing them with your extensionist. More than anything, I believe that the farmer should investigate. Grow plants in your field edges and notice what happens. If you see that a plant does not help you, just eliminate it and substitute it for one that can help you. Talk with your neighbours about flowering plants and the insects that help us. You can all share what each one knows about your experiences or the knowledge passed down from your grandparents or parents. In this way, all of the neighbours can learn new things. The first thing is to talk with your neighbour that you are going to plant this type of plant and that you're going to care for it. Pruning, keeping a more or less stable fence so that it doesn't invade the neighbor's field, so that they don't get upset. And then we plant a variety of plants for all kinds of insects, so that all the birds come, and they help us to conserve this ecosystem, the nature that is really pretty for us to teach our children that there are these good insects and birds. Now that we know how various insects help us get a good crop and how these insects need flowering plants, let us see how we can have more flowering plants in and around our fields. Some shrubs and trees can be multiplied by cuttings. Take stakes from them and plant them in soft earth along your field border so they will take root. It may be best to plant them in the rainy season so you won't have to water them. I do not cut the plants that grow spontaneously, but I leave them there, as they are. And even better, I plant those plants that flower most, as these are the ones that benefit insects and our crops the most. Plants that are apparently worthless, I plant them.
care for the plants along the borders and allow wild plants to grow. When you cut the native plants, they take a long time to grow back. All that time is lost, as the insects will not have any flowers to feed on, and you may not have enough fodder for your animals. By not destroying native plants, there's a permanent supply of flowers. Nature itself is really wise, and so some plants flower at one time and others flower at another time. So the beneficial insects that need nectar have food all the time. Grow many flowering plants in your home garden and talk with your community about having flowering plants in the communal areas. Take advantage of all the places you have. You can also alternate rows of flowering crops with rows of cereal crops. We are doing an experiment, planting broad beans among the maize plants because the roots of the broad bean plants produce nitrogen and give it to the soil. And when the broad beans flower, there is pollen. All flowers have pollen, so this will attract the good insects and along the way fertilize the plants and they also eat the pests. Motivate your neighbours not to use any pesticides. These are poisons that kill all the insects, even the ones that help us. Some people spray their field, so from far away you can see the dead insects. Sometimes the insects come over to this side, and here in my field you see them dead. It's because the neighbours sprayed. Never spray herbicides, as the flowering plants die and the weeds that survive are the hardest ones to manage. Lucrecia Sivinta explains what happened when a neighbour sprayed their border with herbicides. The wasps live in the field borders, so I imagine that they die because they don't have anything at all to eat. What have we learned in this video? There are many insects that help us by pollinating our crops and by killing harmful insects. These insects that help us need pollen and nectar to survive, and a place where they can find shelter. Grow different kinds of flowering trees, shrubs and herbs around your field, so insects find different sources of food throughout the year. You can learn which plants and insects are useful by observing, by exchanging with fellow farmers and extensionists, and by using a mobile app. Talk with your neighbours and convince them never to spray pesticides or herbicides. To the other women and to the community, I would invite you to plant more plants as fences around your crops. These plants are food for us. They protect our crop and many also attract good insects. So it is important to have plants in your fences because they are useful.